Hello and welcome back to the channel Hell Dominance. Anthony here. Please remember to like and subscribe and also click that notification bell if you enjoy what you're seeing and if you want to see more. Coming up in this episode, we have two games results and scorers from Friday night's round 21 games. While James Graham finds himself one job less for 2023. So we begin with the NRL as Friday's games kicked off uh, with two matches played on Friday morning, Friday evening, wherever you are in the world. The two games are Melbourne Storm play the Gold Coast Titans while Manly Seagulls versus Parramatta Eels was the second game that were played in the day. So we go and have a look into the first game and it was the Storm that got back on track with a win over the Warriors and will look to pick up momentum against the struggling Titans outfit which haven't won in their last nine games. Haven't even picked up a point in the ladder standings as they've lost all nine. A top four finish will be the focus for Melbourne as you face a tough run in home with games against the Panthers, Broncos, Roosters and Eels after this weekend. The Titans will be out to restore pride after a horror season and if they are to rattle the Storm's cages, much will depend on David Fafita and Tino Fasamalawe laying the foundations for AJ Brimson and Jaden Campbell to work off. A trip to the AAMI State uh, Park is a daunting prospect at the best of times, but for teams low on confidence and teetering towards a second wooden spoon in four years, it's going to be a mighty effort to avoid the blowout by the storm on the Titans. And with that, here are the rundowns for both teams. The Storm has Cameron Munster moving to fullback with Tylan Wishart bumped back to the bench and Cooper Johns joining the team at 5-8. Xavier Coates makes his return from injury on the wing, taking the place of Dean Aramaya, who is now the replacement player. Tui Kami Kamacho will start at lock and Josh King goes back to the bench. Hooker Brandon Smith is back from suspension, while winger David Nufalumo makes a debut uh, for the Storm after arriving on loan from the West Tigers. Powerhouse State Centre Justin Ollum is out after contracting COVID. For the Titans, after originally being named on the bench, Greg Marju will start on the wing with Patrick Herbert dropping out. Sam McIntyre is a new man on the interchange bench with Jaden Campbell returning to the side at fullback after two games on the interchange, which means AJ Brimson at 5'8", and Tanae Boyd at half-back. It was another win for the Storm, as they ran in six tries to three in a 32 points to 14 victory over the Titans. After a 20 minute or so blast, the Storm were leading 16 points to nil, but went in at halftime at 22 points to 10 due to some valiant effort from the Titans to make a response. Xavier Coates opened the scoring uh, 10 on the 10th minute, which uh, Cameron Munster added a first try of the game on the 15th minute, which he converted. Kenny Bromwich went over on the 250th game, uh, which Munster again converted. That meant that the tries next were coming from the Titans, as Bo Fermer went over in the 26th minute, and Herman S.A.S.A. Bla ba blasted his way through the Storm defence to score from close range. Munster had the final scoring of the half as he scored it in the 32nd minute, but Brian Kelly pulled another one back from the Titans on the 43rd. Munster scored on the 63rd minute for a hat-trick before young uh, Tonham Mapia who went over on the 79th minute in his first try back for the Storm in quite some time. Despite this win, both sides, uh, well, the Storm had Jerome Hughes go off with a 
shoulder injury, which caused to confirm. But more confirmed was for the Titans in the first half as Aaron Booth went off with a serious looking knee injury after he was bumped in a tackle, which he was only partially taking part of as a defending player. The second game of the day saw the Manly Sea Eagles face Parramatta Eels and one of the game's great rivalries is renewed at Four Pines Park as the home side fight to keep their final hopes alive by downing the enigmatic Eels. The blue and gold are walking a little taller after upsetting the Panthers on Friday while Manly endured a tough night against the Roosters without seven key players missing the game through personal choice. I'll say personal reasons. When the sides met at Comeback Stadium in round 11, it was the Eels that squeaked home 22 points to 20, and Manly losing Tom Trevojevic for the season with to a shoulder injury. Des Hassler's men will be hoping to make better luck on home soil as they look to avenge that defeat and get on a roll towards the finals. And with that, here is the team news for the game. The Eagles have a late switch with Martin to Powell to uh, moving to start at prop, with uh, Toa for four, uh, simply going back to the bench. Ethan Bullmore uh, joined the bench in place of Morgan Boyle on Thursday, and the Sea Eagles have Jake, Jason Saab, Christian Tupaluto, Tupaluto, and. To uh, Tawakola, uh, Olome Olukuatu, and uh, simply back in the starting side. But Sean Kepi with it, it remains sidelined with a shoulder injury. With the Eels, they had no late changes to the side that was named early in the week, which means that Jake Arthur takes over at halfback for the injured Mitchell Moses in the only change to the squad that took care of Pan the Panthers in round 20. Arthur starts at five back for the first time in 2022 after playing 5-8 in round 7 and 8. Which means the team are looking to get a double over their rivals for their playoff spots. And it was a Sea Eagles put to the sword by the Eels, 36 points to 20. Despite going in at half time, 14 points all at half time. It was an opening blast from Maker Sivo in the first 10 minutes that got the Parramatta on the board with two tries for an 8 0 lead. Clint Gufferson wasn't able to convert either of those tries. Manly came back though with two tries of their own. Uh, Tula Tua Kola scored on the 20th minute before Jason Saab scored on the 28th minute. Saab at one point had 17 runs running for 194 meters for the entire game. Good effort from the winger. The Eels though came back with a try of their own as uh, Tom Opacic scored on the 33rd minute to make it 14 points all after Ruben Garrick had kicked over a penalty on the 24th minute and converted both of the earlier tries. Half time came along and it was Manly who got the opening points of the game, with Christian Tupolotu scoring on the 44th minute which was unconverted. This then got a penalty for the uh, Manly Seagulls with Garrick knocking this one over. For 20 points to 14, which set the Eels off to go in with four unanswered tries and the win. Wacker Blake scored on the 55th minute before Clint Gutherson showed an excellent pair of Eels against one of his former sides when he hit the turbos to go round the outside of the Manly fullback to score just left of the boasts. Will Penasini scored on the 68th minute, with Dylan Brown scoring the final try on the 71st minute. Clint Gutherson converted 4 from his 9 attempts, while Garrett kicked 4 from his 5. To end the game though, the worst 
ever drop goal attempt I've ever seen from Parramatta, which went about two foot off the floor and dribbled out of the in goal area when the hoots are sounded. Staying in the NRL for the last story of this episode, the Dragons have reportedly axed two assistant coaches for next season following reports. Head coach Anthony Griffin's future was under the microscope. According to the Sydney Morning Herald, Griffin informed assistants Matthew Head and Peter Jansel that they would not be required for the ne next season, but both will stay on for the remainder of 2022. Reports suggest that the St. George Illawarra Club are putting their faith in Griffin for the time being, with Chief Executive Ryan Webb confirming the pair of ass assistants were informed of the decision on Tuesday. On the story, according to Webb, the club are looking to plan ahead for the 2023 season, hoping for to improve their mediocre season so far. The, Ra uh, the Dragons will reportedly begin their search for new assistant coaches for the in the coming weeks, hoping to put a system in place around Griffin to ensure finals football will in will be in their future in the years to come. Previously. League uh, Fox League's James Hooper had reported there was unrest within the Red V's playing squad as the players grow frustrated with Griffin's perceived favouritism towards veterans. Since then, Dragons officials have lamented players who leak news to the media, explaining you don't go whinging and moaning to the press. But it has been emerged today that there's a further coaching clean out at the club as they have let go James Graham from his role as mentoring the club's elite pathways. Graham, who is a usually respected figure in the game, uh, but the former England captain becomes the third St George Illawarra staffer to be asked, asked in the past fortnight. The trio have all agreed to see out the remainder of the season, according to the Sydney Mon uh, sorry, the Daily Telegraph in this uh, story. Get my teeth in. Graham is reportedly now setting his sights to working on working for England at the World Cup at the end of the year. He has also worked at the club as a non as a corporate executive role this season, where his profile was a major law for sponsors looking to invest in the club. The 36-year-old has played 423 first game uh, great games in the Super League and the NRL, while also representing England 44 times. Graham has been a strong influence in Rugby League, with high-profile media roles on Fox League and Triple M. The former Bulldog and Dragon player was reportedly shocked by the club's decision to let him go as well. Very apt to meet, I would say, but um, St. George needed to do something. Uh, first of all, the coach looked to have made her decision so that he um, is perceived doing something on the coaching staff role, trying to freshen it up, bring new ideas, but it's still him at the top of the tree. If this, this doesn't work, I don't think it'll be long for, uh, before St. George Illawarra look elsewhere for a new a new coach but at this point if it does work he's made for that long-term contract that he signed at the beginning of the year and that's it for another episode ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for watching please remember to like subscribe and share this video worldwide as well as clicking that notification bell for any updates or new videos that may be coming your way Again, I've got to apologise for my mispronunciation for the Polynesian names. I do apologise and hopefully I haven't offended anyone for that sort of misstep. I will work on them. I'm going to work on them. I'm going to get it right. I apologise in advance. Um, tell me what your thoughts are otherwise on this episode. Uh, two NRL games, which are fantastic. Bad injuries for uh, the likes of Aaron Booth and Jerome Muse. Hopefully they're not too long term and we wish them well. Tell me uh, what your thoughts are on the changes at St. George Illawarra Dragons. 
It's kind of a knee-jerk reaction, I'd say. Or does it need to be done? Or is it a bit too late in the Griffin tenure? Tell me. Comment section is over. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Please remember to share, share, share this video worldwide. I will now just wish you all the best. So please stay safe. And I'll see you in the next episode.